Hello and welcome to the first video on my new channel on pond and freshwater life. In this video we're going to be looking at 10 -ish of the more common creatures you might find in your garden pond. A water louse looks like a wood louse but lives underwater, so perhaps unsurprisingly they belong to the same group as them, the isopods, a type of crustacean. There are two widespread species in the UK, but the two-spot water louse, Acellus aquaticus, is the most likely to occur in garden ponds. They are the clean-up crew of the pond, breaking down and eating dead leaves and other plant material and recycling the nutrients for plants to use, so a great species to have in your pond. And you can often see the males carrying around the smaller females underneath them like this. He is guarding her until she is ready to mate. Thanks to the fact adults can fly, water beetles are often the first species to arrive at new ponds. Ranging in size from a few millimetres long up to five or six centimetres in the great silver water beetle. And the group with the most species are the diving beetles, with perhaps the great diving beetle being the most recognisable. They swim using their powerful rear pair of legs and hunt down other pond creatures. In many ponds, the great diving beetle is the top predator, and in some cases is even able to take out adult smooth newts. There are over a hundred species of diving beetle, but most are only a centimetre long or less. All diving beetles start off as larvae, and if anything, they are even more predatory than the adults. The lesser diving beetle larva is an active swimmer, usually found in ponds with large areas of open water, where it will pick off small water boatmen and water fleas as it swims round. But the great diving beetle larva is probably the most recognisable, and its well deserved reputation as a voracious predator has earned it the nickname the water tiger. Tadpoles, insects, water lice, and even others of its species are all on the menu for this larva. Often misidentified as leeches, flatworms, in contrast to leeches, move around by sliding, somewhat like a flat slug. They are usually black or brown in colour, and they can have no eyes, two eyes, or a whole series of eyes along the edge of their body, and are regarded as one of the less complex animals in the pond, due to the fact that they have a simple body plan with no internal organs, just a mouth, simple stomach, reproductive organs, and no anus. Despite this, they are often successful predators. You can see this one here is using its pharynx, a muscular tube at its mouth, to try and feed on this leech. Flatworms, famously, can reproduce by just simply splitting themselves in two, but if attacked and damaged, the larger fragments of the flatworm can potentially grow into their own individual flatworm. Dragonflies are one of the best known pond residents, but many people are not aware they spend most of their lives underwater as a nymph. The amount of time varies from a few months in the darters to three or four years in some of the hawkers and even longer in some species. Broadly speaking, there are two main groups found in ponds. There are the larger and more elongate hawkers and emperors, and the smaller and broader chasers, skimmers and darters. They all have what I can only describe as rather cool mouthparts that are hinged and can shoot out at great speed to catch prey. And rather amusingly, they also breathe through their butts, and can use the muscles involved here to squirt water out of their anus at great speed to help them move quickly through the water. But that's a whole other topic for another video. It's the hawker nymphs I see most often hunting around in the weed, looking for prey, whereas darters and chasers tend to sit around, as sometimes partly buried in the sediment at the bottom of the pond, waiting for the prey to come to them. There are also the damselflies. These elongate free-tailed nymphs are the young of the smaller and narrower relatives of the dragonflies, the damselflies. They use these three leaf-shaped tails, or cordial lamellae, to give them their correct name, as gills given a large surface area through which to absorb oxygen from the water. Like their larger relatives, they are predators armed with those hinged mouthparts, eating mainly smaller invertebrates. Mayfly nymphs initially look similar to the damselfly nymph, but have round, not triangular heads, and on closer inspection, they have a row of gills along the abdomen not present in damselfly nymphs, and although like the damselflies they have three tails, they are long and feather-like, not leaf-shaped. Most mayfly species live in well oxygenated flowing water, but by far the most commonly occurring mayfly nymph in garden ponds is the pond olive, which is well adapted to the sometimes low oxygen levels that can occur in ponds. It feeds mainly by scraping algae off plants and sifting through the sediment for organic matter, and like most of the species here, prefers ponds without fish predators that would of course eat them. There are two types of insects that belong to the so-called true bugs, referred to as water boatmen. The lesser water boatman swims and sits the right way up, and the largest species of which is just over one centimetre long, and most of the 33 species found in the UK are smaller. They are mostly herbivores, stabbing into plants and drinking their juices, or detritivores using their front legs to sift through the sediment to look for food. 
The other water boatman is the greater water boatman, also known as a back trimmer, that is usually found hanging upside down from the water's surface. The four species in the UK are all predatory, feeding on both creatures in the pond and those that get stuck in the surface tension, stabbing them with their rostrum and sucking out their insides. If you're silly enough to pick up and mishandle one of these, they can use their rostrum to stab you in the hand, and apparently it's very painful. But don't worry, in 30 years of pond dipping, I'm yet to be bitten by any pond creature, although I probably just jinxed it by saying that. Staying with the true bugs, pond skaters are a creature of the water's surface but this time they live on top of the water. Sometimes they are incorrectly called water boatmen, which, as we've already seen, is a completely different creature. Pond skaters have legs that are water repellent, or hydrophobic to use a scientific term, which enable them to stand and jump across the water's surface. They have a small pair of front legs, with which they can sense ripples coming from any insect that has become trapped in the surface tension of the water's surface, and skate over to them with their lung legs, before grabbing them with that front pair of legs, and like the back trimmer, stabbing them with their mouth parts and sucking out their insides. Looking into a pond or into a pond tray, you sometimes see a bunch of twigs or small stones that start to move around. If you look closer, you can then see a head and some legs poking out the front. These are caddisfly larvae. Most of the species found in ponds build little cases out of silk, and depending on the species and what materials are around, they will then stick bits of plant, dead leaves, sand grains, twigs, or even snail shells to this silk case. This case acts as physical protection from predators eating them, but also acts as great camouflage because if you stick bits of the material around you onto your case, you're going to blend in with that material. They will pupate in this case, and when they emerge, the adults look somewhat like a moth, a group to which they are related. I hope you found that video interesting and informative. In the future, I'm going to be doing more fact file videos about these creatures and the wonderful adaptations that they have. I'll also be doing videos on how to identify the groups, and where possible, the species. I've also got some trip videos of me looking in some great ponds. If any of that sounds good, please do subscribe to the channel. If you've got any suggestions on creatures to cover or ponds to visit, please put them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and please do check out my other videos, including this one of me checking out a local pond.